Hello everyone. This video is going to be about the father of electricity, the brilliant Michael Faraday. So without any further ado, let's check it out. Michael Faraday was an English scientist who contributed to the study of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. His main discoveries include the principles underlying electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism and electrolysis. Michael Faraday was born on the 22nd of September 1791 in Newington Butts. His family was not well off. His father James was a member of the Glastic sect of Christianity. James Faraday moved his wife and two children to London during the winter of 1790 from Outgill in Westmoreland, where he had been an apprentice to the village blacksmith. Michael was born in the autumn of that year. The young Michael Faraday was the third of four children. Having only the most basic school education, he had to educate himself. At the age of 14, he became an apprentice to George Rebow, a local bookbinder and bookseller in Blandford Street. During his seven-year internship, Faraday read many books, including Isaac Watts' The Improvement of the Mind, and he enthusiastically implemented the principles and suggestions contained therein. He also developed an interest in science, especially in electricity. Faraday was particularly inspired by the book Conversations on Chemistry by Jan Marset. In 1812, at the age of 20, and at the end of his apprenticeship, Faraday attended lectures by the eminent English chemist Sir Humphrey Davy of the Royal Institution and the Royal Society, and John Totman, founder of the City Philosophical Society. Many of the tickets to these lectures were given to Faraday by William Dance, who was one of the founders of the Royal Philharmonic Society. Faraday subsequently sent Davy a 300-page book based on notes that he had taken during these lectures. Davy's reply was imminent, kind and favourable. In 1813, when Davy damaged his eyesight in an accident with nitrogen trichloride, he decided to employ Faraday as his assistant. Coincidentally, one of the Royal Institution's assistants, John Payne, was sacked and Sir Humphrey Davy was asked to find a replacement. Thus, he appointed Faraday as chemical assistant at the Royal Institution on 1st March 1813. Very soon, Davy entrusted Faraday with the preparation of nitrogen trioxide samples and they both were injured in an explosion of this very sensitive substance. Faraday married Sarah Barnett on 12 June 1821. Faraday was a devout Christian. His Sandemanian denomination was an offset of the Church of Scotland. In June 1832, the University of Oxford granted Faraday an honorary Doctor of Civil Law degree. During his lifetime, he was offered a knighthood in recognition for his services to science, which he turned down on religious grounds. Believing that it was against the word of the Bible to accumulate riches and pursue worldly reward, and stating that he preferred to remain plain Mr. Faraday to the end. Elected a member of the Royal Society in 1824, he twice refused to become president. He became the first Fullerian professor of chemistry at the Royal Institution in 1833. In 1832, Faraday was elected as a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. He was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in 1838. In 1840, he was elected to the American Philosophical Society. He was one of eight foreign members elected to the French Academy of Sciences in 1844. In 1849, he was elected as an associate member of the Royal Institutions of Netherlands, which two years later became the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences, and he was subsequently made a foreign member. Faraday's earliest chemical work was as an assistant to Humphrey Davy. Faraday was specifically involved in the study of chlorine, he discovered two new compounds of chlorine and carbon, 
He also conducted the first rough experiment on the diffusion of gases, a phenomenon that was first pointed out by John Dalton. The physical importance of this phenomenon was more fully revealed by Thomas Graham and Joseph Low Schmidt. Faraday invented an early form of what became known as the Bunsen burner, which is in practical use in science laboratories all around the world as a convenient source of heat. Faraday worked extensively in the field of chemistry, discovering chemical substances such as benzene and liquefying gases such as chlorine. The liquefying of gases helped to establish that gases are the vapors of liquids possessing very low boiling point and gave more solid basis to the concept of molecular aggregation. In 1820, Faraday reported the first synthesis of compounds made from carbon and chlorine, C2Cl6 and C2Cl4, and published his results the following year. Faraday also determined the composition of chlorine clathrate hydrate which had been discovered by Humphrey Davy in 1810. Faraday is also responsible for discovering the laws of electrolysis and for popularizing terminology such as anode, cathode, electrode, and ions, terms proposed in large part by William Wenner. Faraday was the first to report what later became called metallic nanoparticles. In 1847, he discovered the optical properties of gold colloids differed from those of the corresponding bulk metal. This was probably the first reported observations of the effects of quantum size and might be considered to be the birth of nanoscience. Faraday is best known for his work regarding electricity and magnetism. His first recorded experiment was the construction of a voltage pile with seven British halfpenny coins stacked together with seven discs of sheet of zinc and six pieces of paper moistened with salt water. With this pile, he decomposed sulphate of magnesia. In 1821, soon after the Danish physicist and chemist Hans Christian Oersted discovered the phenomenon of electromagnetism, Davy and a British scientist, William Hyde Wollstone, tried but failed to design an electric motor. Faraday, having discussed the problem with the two men, went on to build two devices. One of these, now known as a homopolar motor, caused a continuous circular motion that was engendered by the circular magnetic force around a wire that extended into a pool of mercury wherein was placed a magnet. The wire would then rotate around the magnet if supplied with a current from a chemical battery. These experiments and inventions formed the foundations of modern electromagnetic technology. In his excitement, Faraday published results without acknowledging his work with either Wollstone or Davy. The resulting controversy within the Royal Society strained his mentor relationship with Davy and may well have contributed to Faraday's assignment to other activities, which consequently prevented his involvement in electromagnetic research for several years. From his initial discovery in 1821, Faraday continued his laboratory work exploring electromagnetic properties of materials and developing requisite experience. In 1824, Faraday briefly set up a circuit to study whether magnetic fields could regulate the flow of a current in an adjacent wire, but he found no such relationship. This experiment followed similar work conducted with light and magnets three years earlier that yielded identical results. During the next seven years, Faraday spent much of his time perfecting his recipe for optical quality heavy glass, borosilicate of lead, which he used in his further studies connecting light with magnetism. In his spare time, Faraday continued publishing his experimental work on optics and electromagnetism. He conducted correspondence with scientists whom he had met on his journey across Europe with Davy, and whom were also working on electromagnetism. Two years later, after the death of Davy, in 1831, he began his great series of experiments in which he discovered electromagnetic induction. Recording in his laboratory diary on 28 October 1831, he was making experiments with the great magnets of the Royal Society. 
Faraday's breakthrough came when he wrapped two insulated coils of wire around an iron ring and found that upon passing a current through one coil, a momentary current was induced in the other coil. This phenomenon, now known as mutual induction, the iron ring apparatus is still on display at the Royal Institute. In subsequent experiments, he found that if he moved a magnet through a loop of wire, an electric current would flow in that wire. His demonstrations established that changing magnetic field produces an electric field. This relationship was modeled mathematically by James Clerk Maxwell as Faraday's law, which subsequently became one of the four Maxwell equations and which have in turn evolved into the generalization known today as field theory. Faraday would later use the principles he had discovered to construct the electric dynamo, the ancestor of the modern power generator and electric motor. In 1832, he completed a series of experiments aimed at investigating the fundamental nature of electricity, Faraday used static batteries and animal electricity to produce the phenomenon of electrostatic attraction, electrolysis, magnetism, etc. He concluded that contrary to the scientific opinion of the time, the division between the various kinds of electricity were illusory. Faraday instead proposed that only a single kind of electricity exists and the changing the values of the quantity and intensity like current and voltage would produce different groups of phenomenon. Near the end of his career, Faraday proposed that electromagnetic forces extended into the empty space around the conductor. This idea was rejected by his fellow scientists and Faraday did not live to see the eventual acceptance of his proposition by the scientific community. Faraday's concepts of lines of flux emanating from charged bodies and magnets provided a way to visualize electric and magnetic fields. The conceptual model was crucial for the successful development of electromechanical devices that dominated engineering and industry for the remainder of the 19th century. In 1845, Faraday discovered that many materials exhibit a weak repulsion from a magnetic field, a phenomenon he termed diamagnetism. Faraday also discovered that the planar polarization of linearly polarized light can be rotated by the applications of an external magnetic field aligned with the direction in which the light is moving. This is now termed the Faraday effect. In September 1845, he wrote in his notebook, I have at last succeeded in illuminating a magnetic curve or line of force in a magnetizing ray of light. Later on in his life, in 1862, Faraday used a spectral scope to search for different alterations of light, the change of spectral lines by an applied magnetic field. The equipment available to him was however insufficient for a definite determination of spectral change. Peter Zeeman later used an improved apparatus to study the same phenomenon, publishing his results in 1897 and receiving the 1902 Nobel Prize in Physics for his success. In both his 1897 paper and his Nobel acceptance speech, Zeeman made references to Michael Faraday's work. In his work on static electricity, Faraday's experiment demonstrated that the charge resides only on the exterior of a charged conductor and that the exterior charge had no influence on anything enclosed within the conductor. This is because the exterior charges redistribute such that the interior fields emanating from them cancel each other out. This shielding effect is used in what is now known as the Faraday cage. In January 1836, Faraday had put a wooden frame 12 feet square on four glass supports and added paper walls and wire mesh. He then stepped inside and electrified it. When he stepped out of his electrified cage, Faraday had shown that electricity was a force and not an imponderable fluid as was believed at the time. 
So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did then please consider giving it a like and do drop your comments below and do check out my other channel in the description. So thank you all for watching and see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. Goodbye.